day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. I'm doing it because I'm glorified the Father. Why we here? Why I'm motivated because I'm glorified the Father. You can do what you want. I'm glorified the Father. Amen. Right. He says, this is back here in John 7. I'll do 10 again. Just for those who didn't catch it. Those who just caught it, just kept in, just popped up and saw the, uh, the video. This is the prayer of Jesus. And we're in John 17 with verse 10. And he said, all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. We somehow you glorified Jesus, glorified yourself. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou has given me that they may be one as we are. <clears throat> that way he said love one another. You want us to be one. See, if if our color skin divides us, then we can't be one. Anything that divides us keeps us from being one. That means we can't be one. But yet he wants us to be one. Uh, I mean that's that's what he just said. I didn't say it, I didn't bring it up, he said it, right? He said it for, for them to be one, as we are. See, he wants us to be one as he is one with the Father. And he is the body of Christ. He wants us to be one. He didn't say be one with one particular color skin. He didn't say be one because of a particular party. He didn't say one because we got, you know, I mean, all those other junk that we, that we see that divides us, all that sowing of the discord, you know, we are all made in the image of God. And this, I know some people feel comfortable disqualified. What I'm saying is there's people I talked about earlier in, in one segment of the video, when you get to see the video, but a lot, I'm sitting there saying, I said earlier, that there are people that want to be in a ministry of disqualification. They want to sit there and say, because of the atrocity and the evilness of people in the past, that we need to sit there and get rid of them. We don't need to sit there and love them. We need to sit there and say that we hate them, that God hate them. We need to understand and say that now we're going to glorify God. Not man. Not you know what people have done to glorify God by being one. He wants us to be one. He said, and that, that was verse 11 I just read, uh, that last piece, that they may be one as we are. Verse 12, while I was with them in the world, that's the Jesus came, I kept them in thy name, the name of the Father. Yeah, you you know, God got a lot of different names that they call, but the Father, amen? Those that thou gavest me, look at this, I have kept them, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, verse 13, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See, if that man, you, you need to catch that. Based on the color of your skin, and you hate somebody else because of the color of your skin, and Christ just said that the world has hated them. Are you the hate of the them? Are you the hate of the them? Are you the hate them? That's what that's that's the whole point. If you are hating, that means you are the hate of them. 
you the hate of those who God has called and kept, who has given the word of God. Because if you give the word of God, then the world hates you. If you're more concerned about the world not hating you, then you love the world. And the world now has no problem with you because you're already going to destruction on your own. Because you're not, we're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're in a different kingdom. And if we're in a different kingdom, we don't hate people. But the world hates you if you line up with the word of God. You ever notice that if you're talking about, you ever notice it's funny. When somebody sit there and say to forgive, then that means that they now mad at you because you forgave somebody. That, that they don't understand that you're supposed to forgive because the Father haven't told you to forgive. But you sitting there saying to forgive means to forget. God didn't ask you to forget. God asked you to forgive. You you learn from what you did, so therefore you don't have to necessarily forget what happened, but you learn from it so that you don't repeat it. You don't sit there and open the door for something to happen again. You so you know, he's not asking you to forget. He just said, don't dwell on it. Don't hate them. Don't sit there and get emotionally tied and wrapped up in something that, that, that now causes you to have to lose your eternal life because you hate somebody. But I was saying that he would hate the murderer, and the murderer has no eternal life about it. That's what the Bible says. That's what the word says. They, if you hate somebody because of the color of their skin, if you hate somebody because they're pulling on affiliation, you have no eternal life about it in you. Pastor tell them that. And tell them don't lie because it's going to speak for itself. The character, the characteristics that you have will show whether you, if you showing hate, that's not the fruits of the spirit. That's not the credentials of a Christian, and therefore you have an eternal, no eternal life abiding in you. You have no eternal life abiding in you if you sit there and operate in hate. He wants us to love one another. That's the credential. That shows that you're a Christian. But if you're hating somebody because of the political party, you're hating somebody because of the color of the skin, you're hating somebody because of where they came from, you're hating somebody because of the religion, then you are not having and demonstrating that you are a Christian. You're demonstrating that you are part of the world. And you all all you want to do is make sure that the world does not hate you. I'm telling you that the world will hate you if you don't line up with their way of thinking. The world, the world has no problem condemning you if you don't follow the way of the world. The world will contradict what God said, judge you shall not be judged. Let the word speak for itself. If you hate your brother, you hate your fellow man, you 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 have no eternal life by you because the word says that. He who hates is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life by us in him. Are you a hater? Because of political party, because of color of skin, because of you know whatever you find that's not acceptable in your sight, been taught and trained that way. Are you hating the person to the point that you are now a murderer? To the point that you have no eternal life? Because the Bible says. I know some of the people said that they tell you going to hell because you can't keep the law. No more you can't. All have said it comes short of the glory of God. You don't. You can sit there and say you don't, but all have said it comes short of the glory of God. The way that the said is death. If you have violated one part of the law, you violate all the parts of the law. You could not keep the law. Only Christ is still the law. Because we couldn't. You know you can. Every last one of the person, anybody listening to you right now, know that you have said it comes short of the glory of God. But you still got the urge that you're working on. That's what the grace and the mercy of God is for. The whole point is this. The world will hate you if you follow Christ, but that's okay because the world can't save you anyway. The world can't give you eternal life. The world can't do nothing to destroy you. So don't sit there and get wrapped up behind people and get to be able you want to please people because they don't, it doesn't matter about them. It matters about them. It matters about glorifying the Father. It matters glorifying the Son. It matters that in it being glorified, the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. He's there. He's your teacher. He's your main teacher. Learn the word. Read and study the word of God. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 
pray to God, have a relationship with God, have a relationship with Jesus Christ, have a relationship with the Godhead so that you have eternal life through death. You're not going to get eternal life. Pastor, tell them. Pastor, please tell them. Everybody that has the five-fold ministry, please tell people that you can't give them eternal life. Please tell them that. And then you can say, I know, I hope they know that. But please tell them that you can't have eternal life through your pastor. You can't have eternal life through your minister. You can't have eternal life through your parents. You can't have eternal life through your political party. You can't have eternal life through anything except from Jesus Christ. And your credentials, just like I said, those people are bad because of things that people have done because they sit there and follow people instead of following God. They're mad at those people and they say they shouldn't have eternal life. All of a sudden it says those who died in hate. Well, the Bible says you died in hate, you hate. It's a matter of, you know, murder is eternal life. That's what the Bible says. I'm not putting you in hell. There's not a lot of people that put you in hell trying to direct you to hate people. It ain't about that. Oh, I can't forgive those people. Yes, you did. You can. Because the Bible said that if you don't forgive me, your Father heaven can't forgive you. That's what the Bible said. I didn't say that. The Bible says that. So remember that. The whole point is, he has given, John 17, 14, he said, I have given them thy word, and the world hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. <laughs> Don't, let's read the word. Read what the word says. That's where your, that's where your victory comes in. Just read what the word says. You're going to go to somebody, they're going to say, they're going to come to you. Everything, but don't you let them say, what the word said, what's written? When Jesus dealt with the devil and said, what is written? It is written. That's what you need to go by. What's written? Well, I'm going to share another scripture. Well, what's written right here, though? Where is it that this is a race where what you're trying to pull to me or show me is going to be contrary, contradicting that? If he say he loved the world, then he sent the son to die for this world so that those who believe should not perish but have everlasting life. Why are you going to send me somewhere else that's going to show me that I can't get there by him? I got to get there by because you condemn somebody else. Go by the word of God, man. Listen to what the word of God says. Yeah, the people are going to hate you don't, if you don't go by what they say. But you don't care about that because you are a child of God through Jesus Christ. No, you're not a... You're not, you're not a Jewish person, but you may be a Jewish person, but the bottom line is, even they call it Messianic Jews too, who have received Jesus Christ the first of Lord and Savior. Because you couldn't get it on your own. You messed up on your own. You lost your land because you couldn't obey God. I'm sitting there saying, I mean, you, you, you go ahead and you do it that way, that's fine. But I'm telling you, it's not fine with God. You have to line up with the word of God. You can even understand that, yes, the people that call themselves Christians have jacked some things up. But you just follow Christ. And yes, not everybody going to love you. That verse, John 17, 40 said, I've given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Amen? Next scripture. Verse 15, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world. You are here crazy, crazy to take you out of this world. So I'm trying to get out of the world because of, you want to get out of here. <laughs> Stay until it's time for you to go home. Amen. <laughs> Verse 15 again, but thou, but if thou should keep them from evil. Amen. God, hey, <laughs> they, they may hate you, but Jesus prayed. That God will keep us from the evil. I like that. He, I like Psalm 91. He dwell us in the secret place. Amen. He says, verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. This is this is the part, this is the most critical piece. That uh, let me come off for a second so I can go into it. <laughs> this is the most critical piece that I have loved. In John 17. I mean, there's a whole, whole lot of other scriptures, man. I mean, the Bible is full of some blessing and revelation. You, you, and, and, and yes, you got to forgive people because it ain't about them. 
And it's about you forgiving us. It's about him telling you to forgive us. God, Father, man, this, but it, it's a blessing. We, we don't need to focus on hate. We need to focus on love of God, man. We need to focus on eternal life that he's given us. We have eternal life, whether you are, are rich or poor, you have eternal life in Jesus Christ if you receive him. If you receive him, not you hating other people, putting other people down. That ain't what, that's not going to get you nowhere. That's not what it's all about. So this, this, this reading right here, I love this reading. Because when you talk about being sanctified, you being set aside by God. There's other people been sanctified by God, but they didn't, buy, they didn't keep his commandments and therefore they have lost things. And yeah, they've been called back, especially Jew, Hebrew, black Hebrew as well. They've been called back to Jerusalem. That's where that's where they're supposed to go, right? That's where they came from. So you that are black Hebrews, you that are white Hebrews, you that are Jews, you you <laughs> go go back to uh when we're ready, go back to Jerusalem. All of us in the end, in the end, when the world ends, when the, the new Jerusalem comes down, all of us are going to it. But if you're called and you're ready to go and follow the law to fulfill the law, go back. You can do that. That's okay. I, I'm not going to hold you back. I'm not going to put you down for it. You know? All I know is that I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't fulfill the law. And I'm not even going to be ashamed of it because you couldn't either. Not even anyone that listen to this right now. Number of you, all of you shall fell short of the glory of God if you try to go by the law of all of sin. And if you say the way to sin is death, the only way is Jesus Christ. You are not, I know some of you want to get there on your own, but you're not going to get there on your own. I know some of you sit there and say that you can get there by the law. You're not going to get there by the law. You can sit there all day long you want to, you're not going to get there by the law. But you can get there by love. You can get there by the love that Jesus told you to have for one another. You can get there by bearing the fruits of the Spirit. By meaning that's the Holy Spirit bearing those fruits, those characteristics in you. You can get there by that. But you can't get there on your own. And you can't make somebody else get there on your own. You ain't going to deceive me and tell me I can get there on my, by my flesh. I can't. I recognize that. I, yes, I am. Recognize that. I can't get there by my own. I can get there by him. <laughs> Glory to God. I can get there by him. And that's what all that matters to me. I can get there by him. So let's go into this final part of prayer, John 17. I do encourage everybody to read John 17 because it's powerful. <laughs> it's very powerful. 